I'm a traveling man and I made a lot of stops all over the world and in every port I own the heart of at least one lovely girl. Oh, oh, oh. The first song I wrote for Rick was, uh, I didn't write for him, I wrote for Sam Cooke and that was Traveling Man. With a, I'm a traveling man. You know, how he sang and did all the whoa, 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 little licks of his, and I was a big Sam Cooke fan. And I was sitting in a, in a park in Los Angeles, or in Hollywood, called DeLong Pre Park. And I used to sit there and wait for my wife uh, to get off work so I'd go pick her up. So, and I didn't play an instrument. I just beat on my dashboard. I'd beat out the rhythm and, and hum the melody. I knew what melody I wanted, and I'd occasionally go to a piano and find the chord. But, and I didn't play piano either. I would just find the chord and say, that's what I want there. But, uh, and it's a fairly simple song. You know, traveling man was, but I took a world atlas, and I, and I looked up what, what do they call a girl in Germany? You know, Fräulein. What do they call a, a senorita in Mexico? I didn't know Wahini, so for Hawaii, so I said Polynesian baby, and I made a song out of it. Uh, a guy in there, a girl in every port. It was the idea, and so uh, after I finished the song, I called up Glenn Campbell and. He and I went in to the studio, and I couldn't play guitar, so I just beat on the back of one, the, the rhythm of the thing, and Glenn played guitar, and I sang the thing like Sam Cooke. So we, uh, we took the demo, a little acetate, up to uh, J.W. Alexander, who was Sam Cooke's manager. And so I, I had met J.W. before through a friend, and, and he said, yeah, Jerry. He had this raspy voice kind of thing. He said, uh, I'll give it a listen when I get a chance. Right? I said, okay, fine. He obviously played it right after we left. Uh, or at least he played the song because Joe Osborne, who was uh, Ricky's bass player, uh, heard it through the wall. He went next door and he said, J.W., do you have that traveling song you were just playing? And he said, oh yeah, Joe, you can have it. And he reached in the trash and he pulled out the demo and he gave it to Joe who took it to the bungalow and put it in Ricky's pile, and, and Rick liked it, so they recorded it. And it sold like six million records right off of the bat. Did you know uh, Joe at that point? Never, never met him. He called me. I was over at Four Star. I had a little office over there that they, they gave me to, to write in and, and uh, call people to show my songs. But uh, they, uh, he called me over there and he said, uh, Jerry, it's Joe Osborne. I'd heard of him, but I, didn't, I knew he played with Ricky. And uh, I said, hey, Joe, how are you? Nice to meet you. What a pleasure. And he said, uh, Ricky just cut your song. And I said, Ricky who? And what song? And he said, Rick Nelson. He's just, Ricky Nelson, he just cut your traveling man. I said, no kidding. How'd he get it? And he told me the story. You know, and uh, I said, hey, great. And a little while later, it came out. He said, he said Ricky was asking if you had some more songs. Yeah, I got about 80 of them. I'll get them over to you. And he wanted to know who sang the backgrounds on, uh, on the demos. And I said, uh, that was me and Glenn Campbell and Dave Burgess. And so from that point on, he had already recorded uh, Traveler Man. And he had the Jordan Airs singing backgrounds on that. But from that moment on, all the other stuff, and even stuff I didn't write, uh, Ricky hired us to do the background vocals. So we were... We, we took over where the Jordanaires left off and did a, a lot of his records. I'm a traveling man and I made a lot of stops all over the world and in every port I own the heart of at least one lovely girl. Whoa, whoa.